I'm going to talk about some legal issues to do with establishing a synthetic biology research commons. And I put the scales up there because it represents the legal system and it also represents weighing up different competing factors or competing considerations. So overall, I think that the model we have at the moment where we have a draft BioBricks public, uh, public agreement, which I'm going to call BPA, um, and that's combined with um, leadership activities and community building activities that the BioBricks Foundation does and the education activities that um, are part of iGEM. So I think all of that together is going to be successful in building a commons for synthetic biology researchers to do their research. So by commons, I mean a shared space where people can do their research. And I also mean a community that has shared goals and a shared philosophy. So um, some good things about the BioBricks public agreement are um, it requires people contributing parts <coughs> to specify if they have any intellectual property rights, like patents, and have to agree that they're not going to assert those and enforce them against other people in the synthetic biology community. So this is good because at the moment, if you're looking at um, a biological part in the registry, you don't know if there are any patents that are relevant to that part. So you don't know if someone's going to come after you and say that you're infringing their patent. So I think it will help a lot having this agreement um, so ev everyone can be confident they're not going to be pursued for patent infringement. Um, particularly if you want to use multiple parts, uh, this standard agreement means you don't have to stuff around contacting and negotiating with every person that's developed a part that you want to use. So this saves you a lot of time and hassle. Uh, but the, um, so the access to the basic biological parts is, is open and it's guaranteed under this agreement, but it doesn't guarantee open access to modified or improved parts or <coughs> applications like commercializable applications that are developed from parts that are contributed under the agreement. So if you access a part under the agreement, you don't have to contribute back anything that you develop from it. So I think it is, if, if keeping the basic work open is the goal, then I think it's sufficient to do that. Um, and it is going to avoid some problems that have been encountered in some other areas of biotech, like stem cell research and gene research. Um, but if, um, if you, because you don't have to contribute back things that you develop, it means that once you access a part, if you develop something from it, you can patent that, and you don't have to give any money to the person that developed the part in the first place. So if you're a commercial entity, I'm not sure if you would <coughs> want to contribute parts to the registry under those conditions. And if you're funding scientists, I'm not sure if you would want to allow them to contribute parts <coughs> to the registry. So that's a potential problem. There are also some potential problems if you're working with federal money. So if you're federally funded, um, your university can uh, choose to keep the, the property in any inventions that you come up with, but they have to be patented, that's a condition of the federal funding. So um, you wouldn't be able to contribute a part to the registry until you had already filed a patent application. But then the patent application or the patent wouldn't be worth very much because you couldn't enforce it against anyone else in the synthetic biology community. So I'm not sure if universities and public funding bodies would want to allow scientists to contribute to the registry. So I suggest that the um, BioBricks Foundation should liaise with uh, tech transfer people and legal people in universities and maybe come up with some guidance, also in consultation with the people that administer that legislation in the government. Um, I'm going to skip over some boring practical stuff, but you can ask me about more boring legal practical stuff if you like. Um, Lastly, the, the BPA has this clause requiring users to comply with applicable laws and not to do anything intentionally harmful or negligent or unsafe. So I think this is great because it shows awareness of those broader issues, but at the moment that <coughs> is kind of buried in an IP contract. So I, I would say why not revisit the idea of having d these uh, broader principles in some kind of guiding a declaration to guide the progress of our field. This has kind of been considered before, but it's fallen by the wayside. So why not revisit that idea? It's been done in some other areas of, um, 
open source biology research.